Even it's your girl Adela. Thank you so much. We've gotten to 338,000 subscribers. Let's get there, my people. Press the subscribe button. I know we've been gone for a while. Sorry, we were in Dallas. <laughs> a lot has happened since we've been gone. First of all, how in the world, as in how? I, I, I can't even comprehend the medulla oblaganta of my brain is still asking this question. How did Jeha Belo win the governorship election in Kogi? As in how? Ogabwari, please move closer. Mr. President, you guys have rigged another election. APC, a governor that did not pay worker salaries for years. Situation reporting, I told all their sales of set of guys who have come around to scatter our balance. Guys, this is what they do. These are people from the IAB. In fact, I have not been able to sleep for days. I've just been asking myself, how? How in the world? Please, educate me because the medulla oblongata of my brain is still suffering regarding this issue. APC, God is watching. You guys have read another election in Kogi. In the last four years, the progress recorded by the APC government under Governor Ihayabelo is more than what the PDP has tried to do in 13 years. You don't mean it, Governor El Rufa. Ah, so this is how old people lie. La, 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 la. For everyone that the governor has offended, I am asking all of you to forgive him. He is young. He is supposed to make mistakes. Hey, El Rufa. Please, don't beg. I said don't beg me. When you are young, you make mistakes. But you learn from them. On his behalf, I am kneeling down. Ah, a little fly. To forgive Yaya Bello if he has offended you. These people are wicked. All these politicians in Nigeria. Governor Rufa, you have no fear of God. Where were you for the last four years that the Kogi people have been suffering? If you said that Governor Erufa, you know, knelt down to beg the people of Kogi State, probably you don't really understand exactly what he meant. He, is mean, he meant that, okay, forgive Governor Yahel Bello for providing roads. Forgive Governor Yahel Bello for providing electricity. Forgive Governor Yahel Bello for providing security. Ah, my friend, shut up. Not you, Mr. Governor. You know, call it a war. A governor under whom so many people died because of unpaid salaries and unpaid pensions. Ah, people were committing suicide. There was one man that hanged himself in 2017 after his wife had triplets. You guys remember? Because Ayah Bello did not pay him for 11 months. 11 months. Despite the fact that he didn't have any children for 17 years, this man killed himself. Everybody in Kogi is sad of Ayah Bello. So how did the man win this election? And not only did he not pay worker salaries, the man has been winch hunting those who opposed him, like my uncle, uncle Dino Malaya Bodin Yes, and those who ran against him. Um, beloved in the of Kogi State, this is Natasha Hadiza Akpoti, a MSDP gubernatorial candidate for the Kogi State elections. Um, the APC thugs were sent down to the SDP secretariat and vandalized properties, um, destroyed all the windows, uh, my banners, pulled out my posters and pasted Yahaya Bello's um, posters on the wall. And unfortunately, at about 12 midnight, we got a call that um, the SDP secretariat was on fire. At night, this whole place was burning. People could not have access to it. Nobody could come close because the APC thugs were here all through the night, shooting ammunition in the air. What exactly is Yahya Bello doing? Do we have a presidency that watches? What about Oshomole? What about APC? Are they proud of their product? You see, this is Auntie Natasha Akpoti, the SDP governorship candidate whom Yaya Bello has been harassing now for years because she's speaking up against all his atrocities and also because she dared to run against him. The first attack was a verbal assault. The man calling me a prostitute. He said, there comes the prostitute. Look at Natasha Ashawu. And then another behind came and pushed me to the floor. And I tried to stand up. I tried to and they were all shouting that what right did I have to contest? Professor Mahmoud Yakubu, the commissioner of police, they were all in the hall and they all heard and none of them came out. Can you imagine? Please follow Natasha on Twitter, on Instagram because she's very outspoken if you want to know everything that is happening in Kogi. And you know what? A lot of people love her, but Aya Bello has continually harassed this woman. I think he's just afraid of her. I think he's afraid of her. It breaks my heart because a lot of young people are also allowing themselves to be used by Aya Bello. Can you imagine? <laughs> Uncle 
good, you know, thank you very much. You know, I can't believe that they read the senatorial election as well. Are they saying the election is inconclusive? I mean, we all saw the new Malaya supporters. He has a lot of supporters. How could he not win that senatorial election in Kogi State at APC? <laughs> Okay, well, thank you very much. It's okay. Put up, Mr. President. Ah, Mr. President, you've rigged another election. The man that should be arrested for so many crimes is made governor again. You're getting ahead of yourself now. Okay, my people, those were Nigerians in London, by the way, who showed Mr. President Pepe. <laughs> well, we are not sure if it's Mr. President or not. <laughs> But one of his convoy, whether it's Buhari or not, it has to be some big person in Buhari's government. Anyway, as a journalist, you know I cannot endorse attacking people. <laughs> At the same time, these government officials are leaving people with no option. First of all, they stripped the vice president of his dignity already. I mean, do you know that they also took away 35 of his aides? They acted like nothing happened, saying that they were reshuffling the cabinet. I'm like, why not fire the man himself? Just say you don't want Osimbajo anymore, you know? Unfortunately, Osimbajo himself is in denial, acting as if everything is okay when it's not his pa came out and said that nothing happened and we were like uh -huh. how do you defend somebody that is in denial what else has to happen before osimajo would stand up for himself or cry out you know a whole vice president is allowing the cabal to push him around and no offense mr vice president in case you are watching but we don't really know what is happening because you are not talking you are not speaking out it's so unfortunate what nigeria has become under buari the man is no longer serving the interest of the people why not step down you know this is the second time that the court says that Showare should be released, it's been more than 110 days since he's been detained and the DSS has refused to release him. There's no way the DSS would of their own just not release Showare unless there's an order from above. So you cannot tell me that Buari and the Kabbalah don't know about this. Did you see this tweet? It says everything. It says it all. Can you imagine those of us that we have Twitter lawyers? Eh? <laughs> they kept saying that his lawyer didn't come for him. Can you imagine that this is happening when Femi Falana is his lawyer? This is one of the most prominent lawyers in the whole of Nigeria and they are treating his client Shoure like this? What hope do the rest of us have if Falana's client can be treated like this? And then this same DSS released a statement that uh, if they release Shoure, it may be knocked down by a car. Ha! Ha! Father! Yes, you have been granted bail. Now, do we bring Shoure at the gate and ask him to go? Is it a discharge of responsibility that we do that? What if Shore was going on the road and he was knocked down by a car? I'm done. Are they trying to kill Shore? These people think that we are stupid. Can you imagine their audacity if they release Shore? It may be knocked down by a father, Lord Almighty. Who are these people that we call DSS? I don't, I'm starting to get worried about them. And then on top of that, they said that Shore is still mobilizing thugs in detention. I'm like, hey, but that DSS, please move closer. No offense, but you know, out of genuine concern, Shore, all right. Are you guys okay? Say Koderenyi, you are not sick. Uh, because we are getting worried about the state of your medulla oblongata. Benny, put up our uh, hand, the spokesperson of DSS, but uh, Peter, you know, do, we are getting worried about you. All these things that you guys are saying. <laughs> we don't know where it's coming from. We are seriously worried about you guys. Anyway, Mangba Drafindri, okay, Now, all this is happening under Buhari, under Buhari's government. No more press freedom, no more freedom of speech, no more freedom of expression. He has become a dictator. And on top of that, he continues to rig election for APC. Do you know how much they gave Yaya Bilo? Can Yes, can you imagine? On top of that, we heard that the police were in helicopters to aid the rigging of the election in our duel. It's okay, continue. We are watching everything. And now they want to introduce death penalty for what they call hate speech that incites murder. And I'm like, this is just a covering to prevent freedom of speech in Nigeria. Death penalty? We don't need death penalty for anything in Nigeria. We don't need death penalty for hate speech or whatever let people express themselves and let me know what you guys think about this death penalty for you know a speech or whatever they call it you guys not do much guess what i'm just keeping it real 
Welcome to the Democratic Republic of Congo, ladies and gentlemen. Did you guys see the video of the Congolese governor who was beaten up in Paris where he went for shopping? upset people are very very angry once again as a journalist i cannot endorse beating people <laughs> or physically attacking people but all these african officials are not making it easy for people to treat them well because they don't treat the people as human beings they don't treat the people well let me know what you guys think about this trend of africans abroad now attacking african officials when they come abroad you guys not know much guess what i'm just keeping it real. it is my pleasure to welcome everyone today it is my pleasure to welcome everyone to this important occasion, which is the flag of hey, 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 Bami. Who be that? The MNC. The MNC week is an oh, father, you don't mean it. Ah, isn't that the first lady of Nasarawa State? <laughs> my special regard to his to the Excellency and. <laughs> So sorry, my people. <laughs> I'm not supposed to laugh. The MNC, the MNC week is and um, sorry, Jare, madam. Stop it, stop it. You don't have to keep playing it. Stop it. To service the health status of. I said, stop it. What is wrong with you, your father? So moving on to South Africa, oh my god, this is one of those stories that makes me believe again in humanity, you know, it started with a man who was caught on tape proposing at a KFC fast food restaurant. And I like the fact that he didn't get himself in debt in order to impress his woman. You know, the story could have ended there, people wishing them well. But you know, some enemies of progress. <laughs> I don't know this lady, but you know, some South Africans are calling her bad belly people, you know? <laughs> anyway, some lady went on Twitter to say that South African men are cheap. She said South African men are so broke that they even propose at KFC. They have absolutely no class. I mean, who proposes at KFC? I'm like, ooh, no, she did not. She, she, did she just what? but instead of people making fun of the couple like she probably was expecting KFC tweeted that people should help them find this couple that they want to bless them hashtag KFC wedding that was the beginning of a long trade before you know it McDonald's in South Africa tweeted that they want to take this couple on an all expense paid trip to Cape Town for an unforgettable VIP experience at Tony Braxton's store I'm like wait what suddenly Standard Bank also tweeted that if they have any debt that they are willing to clear their debt up to 300,000 rand that's more than 20 thousand US dollars and more than 7.3 million naira. I'm like, what? And then Audi, the motor company, tweeted that uh, they will give them a car for their honeymoon. I'm like, father, one company said that they are giving them real diamond rings for their wedding. I'm like, okay. So Puma also said they are donating clothes worth 500 euros. Another company said that they are offering a new pair of phones for the couple. And then some musicians tweeted that they would come and sing at the wedding for free. And then someone also said that he made bed that he would make a bed and donate it to the couple a wedding planner offered free service a pastor offered to officiate their wedding and link them up with professional pre-wedding counselors a baking company offered free wedding cake for the couple to cut the long story short the gift pledges have filled 
pages. The last I saw was three pages. People were donating free things, free makeup for the wedding, tents for guests, groceries for after the wedding, one year unlimited data, free wedding photos, free wedding videos, helicopter ride for the couple, cows to kill for the wedding, free wedding dress, free wedding suit, free drinks for the wedding, completely new kitchen for the couple. I'm like, look at God. Oh my God. Look at God. What was supposed to be an embarrassment of the couple? as the person intended, turned out to be a blessing. Who would have thought? Right now, this wedding is known as National Wedding in South Africa, you know? <laughs> I believe that the wedding date is December 31st. I may be wrong, but everybody is looking forward to this wedding now. These couple's lives have changed overnight. And you know, I'm really touched that South Africans would come together and do this. Please, let's extend this kind of gesture to needy people around us, the homeless around us. Christmas is coming. Let's be a blessing to someone. Let's not wait until something is trending before we participate like a lot of these companies that donated I would love to see them adopt in a poor neighborhood people that are suffering and just bless their lives I'm really really happy for this couple congratulations we're so happy for you I'm looking for the person that will make fun of me that will turn into a blessing you know <laughs> And this is not to say that men should be taking their women to KFC now to propose there can be only one KFC wedding. <laughs> we won't even act like we see you. And huge kudos to KFC for deciding to be a blessing and to see how other people followed suit. That was amazing. And you know what? We need to thank the enemy of progress as well. <laughs> Without the enemy of progress, there wouldn't have been any progress regarding this couple's wedding. So thank you to the enemy of progress. All right, you guys know not know much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. Okay, so I'm so, so excited about this next story because, oh my goodness, ladies and gentlemen, this is one of those stories that make me, oh, oh my God, I'm like, what? So I cannot end this show without talking about a Nigerian couple in Texas that experienced a miracle of having a baby after 23 years of marriage without any fertility treatment. Ladies and gentlemen, meet Pastor Badru and his wife, Mrs. Badru of RCCG King's Palace in Katy, Texas. <laughs> Now they're the proud parents of Isaac Badru. Oh my God, after 23 years. Now, can you imagine that this woman is 49 years old? Like, you can if like that's what I love the most about this story. They both took care of themselves. My wife is looking like 28. Hallelujah! <laughs> but just in case you, you are not aware, she will be 50 next year. You can't even tell that she just had a baby. Mommy, you look good. Like for real. They said that their attitude was if it happened. That's fine. If not, God is still faithful. I'm like, I love that. So I want to thank God that I'm married to my wife and not another woman. Your spouse can swallow all your faith. But this woman stood still. She will say, don't worry. Praise the Lord. We have never been depressed, even at home. We get tired. I won't tell you, I will tell you that. So I told God, if it's, if it's done, fine. If you don't do it, fine. I have too many children. If you say, who are the children of Chade Badu? There are many of them. You know what I love the most about them? The way they love each other throughout this time that they were waiting. They didn't let that weigh them down. Now, on top of that, I've never met them, but one of their church members told me how this couple would sponsor several children to go on vacations in places like Disneyland. I'm like, shut up, Disneyland? You, you take Omolomo, other people's children to Disneyland. How will God not bless them? They take other people's children to Disneyland, to Washington, even on vacation abroad. Like the whole church would sponsor maybe about 100 children and they would sponsor a lot of those children. I'm like, whoa, now that's inspiring. That is the kind of seed that I like to encourage. And God saw the whole time that they were doing this. They were blessing other people's children while waiting for their own. And look at how God blessed them. I am so happy for them. I'm so grateful that they remained an inspiration. They were not bitter. Thank you so much, Pastor and Mrs. Baldwin, in case you guys are watching. This was the name of Money, by the way, did you see how many people were at the name ceremony? It's like the whole Nigerian community in Kedi owns this baby. We're so happy for you. We look forward to meeting Isaac someday. Please 
let their story be an inspiration for you in case you're watching me do not kill yourself because of something that you have no control over i'm serious i've seen people who developed high blood pressure because they are waiting for a child or because they are waiting for the right guy eventually they got what they wanted but they couldn't enjoy it like they should have because their health had been affected by constantly worrying and having anxiety please relax if you've done all that you can and you've prayed please enjoy your life while you wait for whatever you're waiting for. I'm so happy for this couple. You guys now don't know much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. Alright y'all, it's been real and I'm keeping it real right up in here. Don't forget to follow me on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. And if you're yet to subscribe to my YouTube channel, please be sure that you do that. Until next time, I will see you later. Peace out.